Okay, so this is our timeline of psychology. We need to understand where psychology came from and the development of psychology over time. You need to pay attention to significant dates and roughly know the order um, of how psychology developed. So it has its roots in philosophy. Uh, Rene Descartes uh, came up with the idea that the, the body and the mind are independent of each other are separate entities. I think therefore I am is a very famous saying uh, that you might know of and that came from Descartes which is philosophy. John Locke, uh, he came up with the idea of imperialism uh, and this is later the dominant foundation um, of behaviourism and this is that we learn everything we are, who we are, how to behave all from our senses therefore we're born a blank slate, tabula rasa and everything is imprinted through our senses uh, from the environment and the feedback from that environment. Charles Darwin uh, came up with evolutionary uh, and we use evolutionary psychology within the biological explanations uh, and what we're looking for here is adaptive genetics so it's the survival of the fittest do we have instincts to fear certain things because ancestors because survival of the fittest that's what they feared therefore it's imprinted within us and determines our behavior so there's not a lot of free will with evolutionary psychology because we're controlled by an internal Now, the 17th and 19th century uh, psychology really is best described as experimental philosophy because it's very early psychology. And then we've got William Wundt, uh, and we discussed him in our first lesson, and he's the idea of introspection as looking within ourselves and how important our thought patterns are in determining our behaviour. Um, and he was uh, known for opening the first psychology lab in Germany in 1879. And then we move on to Sigmund Freud. He published his book, The Interpretation of Dreams. And then the big psychodynamic movement happened. And this, again, is very introspective, looking withinwards, but importantly, looking into childhood uh, to explain our behaviour in adulthood. And to do this, we use psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis behaviour, which is looking within ourselves and is the idea of sort of person centred therapy. So the answers for our problems are within us and importantly determined from our childhood. And then we move on to 1913, and this is the big break in psychology, which is going to dominate psychology for the next 50 years. And this is behaviorism. Now, this is the idea that we are born a blank slate and everything is imprinted on us from our environment. And what soon he came up with uh, learned by association, which was first established by Ivan Pavlov. Uh, and that is that we learn behaviors through association. Skinner uh, came up with um, a positive and negative reinforcement, and we call this operant conditioning. And this is the feedback from the environment determines our behavior. In the 1950s, humanistic psychology came about, and this was Carl Rogers and Maslow hierarchy of needs. And you'll learn more about this in year two because it's actually assessed in your final year of A-level psychology. Uh, but for now, you just need to know that it is very person centred and it's very focused on the self in determining behaviour. And a lot of free will is associated with this. So you're in control. It takes a very idi ideographic view in that the individual is important and doesn't make assumptions uh, that we would all behave the same. And then we have in the 1960s, cognitive revolution in psychology. And this is where we view the mind as a processor. The input is the environment, so things that we might experience. And our internal computer, our input device, um, is processes this information. And these processes are determined by our experiences and how and determine how we interpret these. So for example, uh, walking down a street, somebody ignores you, how I process it might be different from how you process it. And that sort of those differences are determined by us having a different makeup within our in our computer device. Then we in the 1980s, a biological approach came up, and this is really to do with the development um, of you know, being able to look into the brain and having technology. But this comes from the idea that our behavior is determined by our biological uh, mechanisms, so the brain, uh, hormones and genetics. 
And then we've got the really interesting, on the eve of the 21st century, is cognitive neuroscience. And this is a mix of the biological and cognitive explanations to explain how the structures in our brain affect our mental influences. An absolutely fascinating area, which when we get into sort of forensic criminal psychology, we'll have a look into as well. Uh, but basically, it's the, you know, the frontal lobe. Does it determine that stop mechanism, that go mechanism, and therefore determine our behavior? So it looks at the sort of the thinking patterns that are associated associated with certain areas of the brain. And that's it. That's our timeline of psychology. So you need to be really uh, careful here in understanding when they came. So we'll do some exercises in class which will reinforce this and hopefully embed and you'll be able to repeat um, when sort of cognitive psycho psychology came about, when biology psychology came about. So we'll look into that more and practice it in lessons.